Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the Pure Mathematics P1 paper from International A Level at Excel. Pure Mathematics P1 paper. This question here is all about indices and index form. And um, it's a very important topic and a foundational topic which is needed for us to understand very well, um, especially when we go on to uh, doing things like differentiation and integration and preparing things to be integrated and differentiated. You need to understand this topic very well. So first of all, we have, they've given us A as um, 1 over 64 times x squared and B is equal to 16 over the square root of x. We're going to express each of the following in the form k x to the power of n, k times x to the power of n, where k and n are simplified constants. So they want to express it as something times x to the power of something where the x is in the numerator. We don't want anything where there's, you know, some x in the denominator. It has to be something of this form. That's what they mean here, right? So we're going to take, first of all, the first expression, which is 1 over 64. 1 over 64, x to the power of 2, and we're going to raise it to the power of a half, okay? Now, the way I like to do with indices and index forms, especially when you've got algebraic terms and number terms, is the way I deal with the number terms and the, the way I deal with the algebraic terms are slightly different. It makes it easier for me, right? So first of all, I'm going to use the principle that when you have two things raised to a power, a product raised to a power like this, you can think of them as separate um, you know, terms raised to that same power. So a times b all to the power of n is the same as a to the power of n times b to the power of n. Right? So that power of n is referring to both of them. If it was just a times b to the power of n like this, the n therefore does not uh, apply to the a at all, just to the b. So for example, a b squared will be, mean, it means a times b times b. That's what it means. The a is not squared. But if it was a, b all squared, it means a times b times a times b, which is a squared, b squared. So it's for both of them. So that's very important for us to understand. Okay, so using that principle, I'm going to split this into two parts. I'll write this as 1 over 64 raised to the power of a half times x squared raised to the power of a half. Now, when, I've come, when I get to number terms, Okay, I want to find the square root of, I want to find 1 over 64 over half. I think of this as the square root of 1 over 64. Why do I keep writing 16? 1 over the square root of 64. Okay, so with the number parts, I take it as in terms of roots and power. So a to the power of m over n means the nth root of a to the power of m. The denominator is the root. So here the denominator is, is the root. So it's the square root. You don't have to write the two. The power, okay, so it's the power, and the power then therefore will be 64 to the power of 1. Okay, so the denominator, okay, so square root of, and the numerator is the power, all of this to the power of 1, which is just 1 over 64. And then when it comes to the letter terms, what I like to do is I like to think about the laws of indices. When I raise something to a power, I multiply by that power. So x to the power of 2 to the power of a half, I multiply 2 times a half, which gives me 1. Okay, so that's important for us to also know that, you know, a to the power of m raised to the power of n will give you a to the power of m times n. You multiply the powers. Okay, so that and then we can be simplified. Let me just get rid of this extra stuff here just for my explanations. Now we can get rid of some of this extra stuff here. Okay, let me just um, plug in my laptop. This battery is going down. All right, so now what we can do is we can find the square root of 1 over 64 which is 1 over 8 and x. So we have 1 eighth x, and that's the answer to part A. Okay, so it's in the form exactly that we require. Why a bit neater. We have 1 over 8 x. That's the form we need. A constant times x to the power of something. Here the x is to the power of 1. You don't have to write it. Okay, for part B, it says, a same thing, a equals 1 over 64 x squared, b is equal to 16 over root x. We've got to find 16 over b cubed, 16 divided by b cubed. So this is like, because we got two fractions, I'm going to write it like this to make life easier. 16 divided by b cubed, which is the same as saying 16 divided by 16 over 
root x all cubed. Okay, all cubed. Okay, this is the same as saying 16 cubed over root x all cubed. That's what it's the same as saying. Okay, you can just like we had um, a times b, if you have a over b raised to the power of n, it's the same as the numerator raised to the power of n divided by the denominator raised to the power of n separately. Same thing. Okay, so now, um, before I actually deal with that, what I'm going to do is, because I want the x to be on top, I notice I've got division here. So I'll say 16 times, okay, and this is going to be root x cubed over 16 cubed. I've just flipped them upside down and written the cube separately on each of them. Okay, because division becomes multiplication, and then you change, you flip what's after the division sign. Okay, that gives you how you divide and multiply fractions. So now I'm going to deal with this. Well, this 16 will cancel with the 16 cubed. That's going to be 16 squared. So I have 1 over 16 squared, which I'll work out in a minute, times, and it's the square root of x cubed, so it's x to the power of a half to the power of 3. Okay, so 16 squared is... 256, so 1 over 256, x to the power of, multiply the powers of half times 3, is 3 over 2. And there's the answer to part B. We've got it in the form k times x to the power of n. n has to, the, the x term has to be on the numerator, okay, and there's our answer. Okay, now for part C, right, the same A and B stand for the same things as, of course, we want to now find um, a over a times b over 2 to the power of negative 4 over 3. Okay, now what I'm going to do first, to make life easy for myself, I'm going to say, let's, let's see what a times b is first. And then we can deal with that. All right, so first I'm just finding what is, what is this going to give us. Simplify it, put it into there when it's simplified. We'll make your life simpler, make your life easier. So a times b is 1 over 64 times x squared multiplied by 16 over the square root of x. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this as 1 over 6. I say 1 and I write 16. What's wrong with me? So I have 1 over 64 times 16. So I'm separating these uh, the number terms. Okay, um, times x squared. Okay, and I'm going to put times x to the power of negative a half. Because we know that 1 over root x is the same as x to the power of negative a half. 1 over x to the power of n is the same as x to the power of minus n. Why did I do that? Because I want all the x's to be on the numerator. I want the x terms to be on the numerator because it says k times x to the power of n. Right? It has to be the x on the numerator. So I've got, I've got 1 over 16 times 1 over 64 times 16, x squared times x to the power of negative a half. Because x to the power of root x is x to the power of a half. On top, it becomes x to the power of negative a half. The 16 and the 64 cancel out, leaving you with 4. So you have 1 over 4. Okay, so you have 1 over 4. We haven't finished yet. This is 1 over 4 times, and this will be x to the power of 2 minus a half is 1 and a half, which is 3 over 2. Okay, that's not our answer yet. That's just what AB is. So, so we have AB, which is a quarter x to the power of 3 over 2, okay, divided by 2 to the power of minus 4 over 3. Okay, so... This AB divided by 2, that's going to give me 1 over 8, because this is going to be a, a quarter times 1 over 2. So it's 1 over 8, x to the power of 3 over 2, raised to the power of minus 4 over 3. So now we can deal with each of these terms separately. We have 1 over 8 to the power of minus 4 over 3, and we have x to the power of 3 over 2, raised to the power of minus 4 over 3. Now this becomes, now remember when you have p over q to the power of minus something becomes q over p. So it's going to be 8 over 1 to the power of 4 over 3. Okay, just write it as a reciprocal and change the sign of the, uh, the power. Don't, you don't find the reciprocal of the power, no. The minus sign from the power becomes positive. The power stays the same without the negative sign. And then you flip the fraction that is, is being raised to that power. Okay, and then this is going to be x to the power of, we're going to have to multiply the power, so 3 over 2 times minus 4 over 3, the 3's cancel, we've got minus 4 over 2, which is minus 2. That'll be x to the power of negative 2 when you multiply them together. We're not adding them, we're multiplying them, remember? Okay, and then we have to simplify this. Now, what does x to the power of 4 over 3 mean? Okay, it means the cube root of 8 to the power of 4. Now, the cube root of 8 is 16, 16 to the power, sorry, the cube root of 8 is 2, 
2 to the power of 4 is 16. Cube root of 8 is 2, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. That gives you 16, x to the power of negative 2. And there's the answer to part C. Okay, so it's in the form k times x to the power of minus or power of n, where, you know, the n and k are both constants, right? So there we have the answer. Okay, and that's the simplified constants. That's the answer to this question. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of indices, okay, can be found over here in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And um, there will be a video here, which will take you to back to basics of indices, where I go through this topic in detail. It will also appear in a card during the video, all right, where this topic will be answered in detail, how to deal with uh, indices in P1 type of questions, lots of examples for those of you who need strengthening in that particular aspect. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the Pure Mathematics P1 paper from International A-Level at Excel.